Hello again! Thank you so much for stopping by my YouTube channel and blog. I hope that you've had a great weekend. I'm happy to share with you today a card I created inspired by Pantone's Color of the Year, Living Coral. Coral is such an intriguing color to me. Is it pink? Is it orange? Well, whatever. It's beautiful and here is the card that I created with it in mind. I'm using the Dainty Sprig Stamp and Die Set from Altenew for Simon Says Stamp. This was a limited edition set for Stamp Temper 2018. So unfortunately, it is no longer available, but I will link to both Simon Says Stamp and Altenew in the description box below because I highly recommend checking out the other floral layering stamps like this one because they really do just create such beautiful images. With layering stamps like these, I like to use my Misty tool because it really helps me to line up the images and I can quickly stamp multiple images. I'm stamping the outline image from the set in black ink, then flipping the paper around to stamp another. Then when I go to line up the floral layering pieces right on top of their outline, I can stamp the image flip the paper again and it will be positioned perfectly to fill in the other stamped image. This stamp set has three layers to color the florals. What I like to do is stamp the largest piece, the stamp that covers the most surface area of the flower, in my lightest color of ink. And for this card, I'm using a light pink color. Then the next layer, which covers less surface area of the flower and usually adds more detail, I'll stamp in a darker color, which I'm using a darker pink color. And the last layer is the floral center, which I'll do in a little bit. And then each time after stamping, I'll clean the stamps with my Lawn Fawn Stamp Chamois. Now it is entirely possible to stamp these images without a stamp positioner. A clear block would also work too because you can see through it to line up the layers. However, even if the layers aren't lined up perfectly on top of one another, that's totally okay because a stamp set like this really lends itself very well to offset stamping, which is a technique in which layered images are purposely designed not to be lined up right on top of one another. So there's no worry about the images being a little off because this is an intentional technique that is just as beautiful. And you'll see that my stamps are not lined up perfectly at all, but I think the project turned out beautifully. This stamp set also includes some small stamps that you can use to fill in other parts of the image. I stamped some leaves and some smaller buds, but you could also just color these in by hand, which is what I do with a water brush. I'll take some of the excess ink from the lid of the ink pad and lightly apply it to areas of the image. Uh, I'm not using watercolor paper, so I don't apply too much water in one area and the paper holds up nicely. The areas I did watercolor turn out slightly lighter than the stamped area because the water dilutes the pigment in the ink, which is exactly what I wanted so that the resulting image has some color differentiation, but they all work well, well together because it's essentially just a lighter version of the same color. And this is where I stamp the middle of the flowers with an acrylic block. Because they're so small, I don't want to mess around with using the Mesty. And I'm only coloring in the flowers in the lower image because I'm going to be die cutting those out so it's not necessary for me to color the whole thing. And then I'll put this whole thing aside while I stamp the background. I'm using the Modern Rose Blooms background stamp from Simon Says Stamp. I love this background stamp. It reminds me of elegant floral wallpaper. And I'm stamping it in my Tim Holtz stamping platform. And I put a temporary piece of adhesive on the back of the paper so that it will stay in place while I stamp it. And I'm stamping with the color Abandoned Coral Distress Ink. And I double stamp it so that I get a nice impression 
and I end up cutting this piece in half lengthwise. So I actually end up with two pieces to make two cards. This stamp set has coordinating dies and I'll use them to cut out the images. The purple tape I use will hold the dies in place while I run it through my Vagabond die cutting machine. This the purple tape is removable, so it won't damage the paper when I peel it off, but it's strong enough so that I can reuse each piece several times. And I actually keep uh, little pieces uh, on the edge of my Vagabond machine so I can just pick one up and grab it when I need it. I also die cut a stitched border around the floral background piece that's now trimmed in half and on another sheet of Nina Solar White cardstock so that my finished card will have this lovely faux stitched border around it. I also want to incorporate this sunshine border die from Simon Says Stamp onto my card and I want it to match the floral background and since I don't have a piece of cardstock in the abandoned coral color, I decided I'll just create my own by coloring another piece of cardstock with that ink and an ink blending tool. I'm using a textured piece of cardstock because it just adds a little bit of interest to the card. Then when the paper is completely covered with ink, I'll die cut the border and now I'll have it in the color that I want. And I also die cut another piece because it's such a delicate die that I want to glue two of them together. Not only will this give the card more dimension, but it'll also give the die cut more stability too. I use Ranger Multimedia Matte and apply it very lightly to the front of the second die cut piece and then I'll adhere the colored piece right on top of that. And I'm using a non-stick silicone mat underneath because it really helps with cleanup. And it'll make sure that I don't accidentally stick the small die cut to anything underneath. So the silicone sheet is non-stick. So if any excess glue oozes out of the sides, then I can easily lift it off the, the mat, no problem. But that wouldn't be the case if there was a piece of paper underneath and instead I might have to end up fighting with it if it got glued down or worst case scenario, it would, it would tear and I'd have to do it again. And tweezers work really well here to move the die and really get into those tight spaces. Next, I'll stamp the sentiment and it reads, kindness is everything. I first stamp it in black ink and apply some clear embossing ink over the top just to give the sentiment a little bit of glossiness to it. And because I'm heat embossing, of course, I prep my paper first with the anti-static powder tool. I'll stamp it, then apply the embossing powder, and then heat it with my heat tool until it melts. Then I'll go about assembling my card. And I use score tape to apply the stamped roses background to the card panel. I probably would have used a tape runner to do this, but I'm actually out of the refills right now, so I'm just using what I have on hand. And I glue the border die down with a little Ranger matte medium, and then I'll start arranging the flowers. And I'll adhere them to the card using foam squares to keep them in place. And I actually use a combination of both the thin and the regular foam squares. And I really like to do this when layering images like this so that I don't end up adding too much bulk to the card. The last thing I do is add some sequins. I've totally been in a sequins phase lately, so they are in a lot of the cards I'm making right now. And I do that with some matte medium and my Crystal Katana multimedia pickup tool. And I'll adhere them. And then of course I do a little drop of the clear Nouveau drop over the top of them. I stamp the words thank you on the inside of the card. I know a lot of people will also incorporate stamping on the inside of the cards. And I actually thought about doing that by stamping some of the florals on the inside of the card, but I didn't this time. I find that I usually don't do a lot of stamping on the inside of my cards besides the sentiment. 
when it's completely dry, I trim off the edges of the border die that were sticking out on the sides. And then I'll adhere that entire card panel to my card base. And I usually remember to put adhesive on the back of my card panel before I start embellishing it, but I actually forgot this time. But as long as everything is completely dry and there isn't a bunch of junk on your work surface, then it'll work to apply the adhesive just gently to the back and then adhere it to the base. And that is my completed card. I think it turned out beautifully and I'm really proud of it. And if you liked it too, then I really appreciate your comments, your thumbs up, and liking the video. Also, let me know if you do stamping on the inside of your cards because I'd love to hear what you have to say. Thanks again for stopping by and thanks again for your support. I've listed some of the supplies in the description box below and a link to the corresponding post on my blog. So if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, you can head over to my blog and see some still pictures of the card. I hope that you have a great week and I'll see you next time. Bye.